Hey guys, welcome back to another Planet Mithril Paints, and today we are going to be painting Gorbag, Lieutenant of Kirithungul, the vile orc who captures Frodo once he's been attacked by Shelob and takes him to the Tower of Kirithungul. First and foremost, I just want to say super sorry that it's been such a long time since we last uploaded. Uh, unfortunately, me and the missus have been a little bit unwell the last few weeks. Uh, it's nothing corona related. Uh, we're tested regularly and we're super safe, super fine, so don't please don't worry about that. Uh, but it's just been a bit of a flu bug that's been going around, a bit of a cold. Uh, both our throats have been absolutely knackered and I didn't think you guys wanted to have to listen to me uh, barely able to talk. Um, would have been interesting videos regardless. Uh, but we are back on track now, we are more or less over the worst of it. Uh, I'm a little bit husky still, but that just adds a certain je ne sais quoi to the videos maybe. Uh, but yes, nevertheless, we are back today with probably what is the first orc on the channel? Is it the first orc? Might be the first orc. Uh, so we thought we'd do Gorbag, as he's a really cool little character, a really cool little model and really effective in the game. Uh, as always, we start prepping our model by just trimming off all the excess flash, all the excess uh, bits of metal that hang on to the model. This is a metal sculpt, so there might be a fair bit of that kicking around. And then we get rid of all the mold lines with a combination of a circular fine file and a mold line clean of some of the big patches of mold lines across the smoother areas. Uh, once that was done, we affixed him to the slotter base using super glue, and we had to put a slight kink in the edges of the... Um, the base peg just to get him in there nice and snugly so he could dry and not have to wobble around on the base uh, and then we covered the base in fine modeling sand using qva glue and once that was all dry we undercoated and primed with citadel chaos black spray really excited to get this all painted up really happy to get him on the channel and get actually get some orcs on channel for once so without further delay please sit back relax and enjoy the video We're going to start with scale colour Ardennes Green and scale colour Arbuckles Brown to apply the base coat to Gorbag's face, skin and hands. The Arbuckles Brown will help tone down the Ardennes Green nicely and give us a really authentic dirty orcish look which we can build on later on in the highlighting and layering stages. Now we're going to use Iron Warriors and Warblock Bronze and apply an all over base coat to all the armour plating and metalwork on the model. Again, the Warblock Bronze will just help add a slight degree of tarnishing to the base coat and really give it that rugged, orcish, ill looks after look, which is synonymous with orcs. Take your time and make sure you get all the metalwork here. It's surprising how much metalwork is actually on this model. Lots of plating and segments of armour all over the place, so take your time and make sure we find all these little bits to get a nice consistent coat. Now we're going to use scale colour petroleum grey and scale colour brown grey as a mix and base coat all the fur down Gorbag's legs. We don't want to go for a rich brown fur here, we want a slightly dark, dirty, matted look to the fur. So these two colours mixed together will give us a really nice tonal base coat. And also while we're here we're going to pick out his greasy matted hair over the back of his head. Now we're going to add some scale colour Sherwood Green to the original Ardennes Arbuckles mix and we're just going to apply an all over layer all over Gorbag's face, hands and skin. As with the armour, he's got a lot of random bits of skin showing through underneath all the metal plating, particularly down the ridges of his back and along the arms as well. So just make sure we catch all these little areas just to make sure we've got all the flesh covered. See, so we've got some in the elbows here and just under the arm there. And here are the bits down the back. Just nice and precise. Don't want to bleed too much over onto the base coat of the armour, but it's not the end of the world if we do. Now we're going to apply a manual shade with Ardennes Green and Rift Green, thin down approximately 50% with water, and we're going to apply this as a manual shade into just the recesses and all the grooves along Gorbag's skin and face. Pay particular attention to the forehead and the detail around the eyes and chin, as well as separating out all the fingers as well. Now we're going to apply a highlight with pure scale colour Sherwood Green, 
and trying to our best to leave the manual shade we applied earlier showing in the deepest recesses just pick out all the facial detail and start creating some definition across his features. Gorbag's got quite a defined face as the skin across his face is quite drawn as befitting all the orcs so it's quite easy to work out where this needs to go and we just need to make sure we keep the fingers all separated out to create definition across the hands and just applying very neat little layers to all the other exposed skin. For the next couple of highlights, we're going to continue to add scale color full green to the mix. And at each successive stage, we're going to just push the further layer further and further by keeping our highlights tighter and neater, just to create a nice sense of transition between the darker and lighter areas of Gorbag's face and skin. We can start creating some frown lines along the brow now, just to create some definition there and not have it just be a complete shaded area. And again, as I say, we're just going to keep our highlights tighter and neater for each successive highlight just to further push that smooth transition between the darker and lighter areas of his haggard orcish skin. We opted for two further highlights with the full green and as you can see here we're adding more full green just for the penultimate highlight and we are literally now just effectively tracing around the face. We're framing the face nicely with this mix, which will just help to really pull across that orcish look we want to go for for Gorbag. Areas to pay particular attention to, the bridge of the nose, framing the brow and the forehead, whilst also defining the frown lines at the top, uh, and the uh, cheekbones and chin, as well as now pushing the definition of the fingers further by concentrating more towards the knuckles and the fingertips. Finally, we're going to add some scale color Haiku Yellow to the Sherwood uh, full green mix and just apply an extremely fine edge highlight just to the absolute most prominent areas of his skin and facial detail, which will just make the finished look pop that little bit more. The yellow will bring up the transition nicely rather than adding more of a luminous green here as we don't want to go for a really luminous green for the, this all in particular. We want it to be a more muted, natural, matted tone, which looks more realistic from Middle Earth. Just pick out all the knuckles, just apply dot highlights across the knuckle joints and the fingertips and the elbow joints, and there we have it. Now we're going to use scale colour black and we're going to very, very carefully just paint in the recesses of the eyes with a couple of horizontal lines just to rebase coat those ready for the pupil detail. Now we're going to be using Iroko and we're going to very carefully apply a few dots either side of the central iris in the eye we've just base coated just to create his eyes. Now we're going to use Citadel Base Rakarth Flesh and just very carefully with a few quick dot base coats pick out his grimy grubby teeth in his jaw. And with that you will have Gorbag's face, skin and facial details all finished. Now we're going to use Warp Lock Bronze, thin down with some Lamia Medium and work on toning down the armour to best befit the look of Orcs in Middle Earth. And we're going to apply this as a semi-manual shade all over the armour plating just to really give it that beaten tarnished look that we want to go for. Try and avoid it pooling anywhere because we don't want any big clumps of Warp Lock Bronze to be prominent on our model when we're finished. But a nice even manual shade all over just to give it that slight look of rust and time aged metal. Now we're going to use Agrax Earth Shade thin down again with Lamia Medium and we're going to further push the shading and tie it all together a little bit more by applying an all over wash to all the armour plating and metal work on the model. Again this will just help tie together the Warp Lock Bronze Manual Shade and give us a really nice almost brown look to the metal once we've shaded down with the next wash stage ready for the uh, next layering and highlighting stages. Now we're going to apply another wash with Numb Oil, thinned down once again with Lamia Medium, but not quite as much, 
and we're now going to tone down all the armour uniformly with a thorough wash of non-oil over every single bit of armour and metalwork on the model. Make sure that your previous wash is dry because you don't want to avoid any streaking, but this will just help really give it that dark, almost black look to the armour which Gorbag sports in the films. Now we're going to use lead belcher mixed with a small amount of padded witch flesh and once both washes are dry we're going to very carefully and quite painstakingly go around every single segment of armour, every single edge and every single little bit of metal detail and apply an edge layer with this mix. We want to be as precise as we can here before the final highlight stage as we don't want to undo any of the rusting and ageing work we've done previously with the washes and the shades. Just be very careful and keep your layers nice and targeted and nice and fine just to really give that impression of the sharpness. What we're trying to create here is a sense of sharpness over the model, contrasting well with the deep recessed blacks and browns we've used to tarnish it. As Zork armour is very jagged, very spiky, and not necessarily the most well-maintained in Middle Earth. Try and make sure you've got a good point to your brush while you're doing this, because as we said, the neater you can be here, the better the overall effect will look once we're finished. Just all around the back, all the way down all the pauldrons and the greaves because we really want to try and avoid bleeding over onto any of the other metal work that we don't want this highlight on because trying to recreate that effect at this point won't look terribly consistent. And just apply a nice fine edge to the blade either side just to give it that real sense of sharpness. Now we're going to add a bit more Pallet Bridge Flesh to the mix, which will bring the mix up to an approximate 50-50 split between the Lead Belcher and the Pallet Bridge Flesh. And we're just going to apply a very dot edge highlight to the most prominent areas of metalwork, which will be facing more towards the light sources, just to give it a slight little glint and finish off the effect really, really nicely. So just the top bits of the spines that go down the back, and the very edges of all the metalwork down the skirts just as a point of reflection. Now we're going to use a mix of dryer bark mixed with Abaddon Black, and now that all the metal work is done, we can start picking out all the leathers and straps over Gorbag. There are quite a lot of belts that run all the way down his arms and his legs and we didn't want to put the base coat on for this uh, before we'd done the metal as there was a good chance we were going to bleed over onto this whilst doing the metal work itself. So now we're going to apply just nice careful base coats to all the leather and straps down his sides, down his arms and the skirt that hangs down his front and his back with this Abaddon and dry bark mix. We can now carefully pick out all the straps around his legs and the fur as well as base coating his boots. Now we're going to use Citadel Gorefoil Brown and just apply a very fine highlight either side of all the belts and straps. Again, nice point to your brush, nice and neat, nice and precise to really get this where you want it to be and make the effect look the best it possibly can. There isn't an awful lot of point washing all the belts and straps as the surface area is quite small and then we risk bleeding over onto the armour. So we can get away for this with just the base coat and this layer highlight. Now we're going to use a mix of petroleum grey and scale colour black mixed down with a fair amount of water and we're going to apply this as an all over shade to Gorbag's greasy hair and all the fur that surrounds his legs. This will sink into the recesses and give a really nice tone to the fur which we can work off in the next layering and highlighting stages. Now 
Now we're going to use the mix of petroleum grey and brown grey again. And once your shade is dry, we're going to very carefully start picking out individual hairs and fur across both the head and the legs. We would normally do more of a bulk layer here at this stage when painting hair and fur because this is quite old and quite matted. He's obviously had it on for quite a while. Uh, we didn't think it needed quite as much care and definition. So now we're going to go straight to just carefully picking out all the individual hairs and furs across the legs and the hair to create some initial definition. Now we're going to start adding scale colour rainy grey to the previous petroleum grey and brown grey mix and just push the highlights further and further by focusing more on some of the upper and outer curls of hair across the head and fur down the legs. Again this is quite painstaking, you need to make sure you've got a good point to your brush to make sure the definition goes where you want it to go but once we're finished with this the effect will look really good and be ready for our final highlight stage. The rainy grey really complements the mix of the brown grey and petroleum grey really nicely and effectively and naturally brings up the tone to a really nice hue overall. Now we're going to increase the amount of rainy grey in the mix for the final highlight stage and just focus this as an edge and dot highlight over some of the most prominent areas of hair and fur just at the very tips just again to create that sense of light hitting the most upper areas and outer curls of fur. Now we're going to use Citadel Base Steel Legion Drab and there are a few areas of just random cloth on Gore Bag and we're going to use this to pick out these little areas which will just give a nice little spot colour as quite a lot of the tones we've used so far have been quite dark and quite muted and this will just give a nice little bit of complementary vibrancy to some of these areas of cloth. Just very carefully pick out all the little areas of cloth that we haven't quite picked up yet, ones that aren't skin and aren't armour as well as the dagger sheath that hangs on his back. Now we're going to use a mix of Steel Legion Drab and Talon Sand and just layer these areas up just nicely and naturally. Again, just to help give a little bit of vibrancy to some of these areas. It's all under the arms. A little bit here under the arm on the back. And then once again, just layering over the sheath on the back. Now we're going to apply a quick little targeted wash with our Agrax Earth shade again, just to tone these down a little bit and create a little bit of definition. There's not an awful lot to fill in here, but there are some small defined folds which we want to just make sure shine through when we finish. Now we're going to add some Pallid Witch Flesh to the previous Steel Legion Drab Talon Sand Mix and just very carefully apply a layer, once your wash is dry, over all these little excess cloth areas. With the dagger sheath on his back, you can see there's some folds bunched up towards the ends. So we're just going to quickly define those, just nice and neatly, ready for the final highlight stage. Now we're going to add a bit more Pallid Witch Flesh to the mix, which will bring our mix to an approximate 50-50 split of Pallid Witch Flesh and the previous brown mix. And just apply a very fine edge highlight, just to the upper areas of this cloth material, just to make it pop that little bit more. Just frame the sheath a little bit more and just highlight the upper folds of material where the dagger hilt is. You're going to sit it on base, ruin lot brass and just very carefully pick out the hilt of Gore Bag Sword. Being very careful to avoid any of the green on his hand.
and we're going to layer this up with Citadel Sycorax Bronze and just apply a nice neat line just over the top of the hilt and the pommel where it pokes out underneath the sand just to catch the light. Finally, we're going to shade this back down just by applying a very light coat of Agrate Thur Shade just to give it that little bit of tarnishing which will blend in well with the rest of the tarnished armour across Gorbag. Finally, we're going to use Lead Belcher and just with a good point to your brush, pick out any of the belt buckles and hooks that hang down around Gorbag. As well as the chainmail that's poking out from his left arm. Now we're going to dry brush the base sand with drier bark which will give a nice earthy tone for us to work off for the next dry brushing stages. Apply a second dry brush to the sand now with Citadel Gorthor Brown and keep this ever so slightly lighter than the dry bark was which will just help pick out the nice top areas of sand and leaving the dry bark showing underneath. Finally, using Pallid Witch Flesh, apply a very feather-like dry brush just over the very top of the sand just to pick out the absolute top areas of the base and finish the transition between the darker and lighter areas of earth. Now, using PVA glue, we're going to finish off the base. First off, we're going to attach some Middenland Tufts to the base just to fix those, a couple of those around the base just to give it a little bit of a eye peeling pop. And then we're going to put a few patches with just some miniature dead leaves on the base. As well as finishing off now with some clump foliage just in little clumps around his feet. Once you're happy with your base you can affix the model to a paint pot using, just using some blue tack and just very carefully with a solid line Paint the base rim with dried bark. And there we have it. Gorbag, the Orc Captain, Lieutenant of Kirithungal, ready to go hunting hobbits in service of the Dark Lord Sauron.